Okay, so we'll look at a couple of homework problems from section 8.4, test a couple claims uh, about means. Uh, take a quick look at the instructions for all of your homework questions, pretty similar to last time. Uh, so uh, we want to test, test a given claim, and we'll use the p-value method, uh, not the critical value method. So we want to identify the null and alternative hypotheses. Uh, not the test statistic. Yes to the p-value, not the critical values. Um, final conclusion, that will either say reject the null or don't reject the null. And then uh, a sentence that addresses the original claim. Okay, so let's look at 14. So data set three in appendix B includes 106 body temperatures. Thankfully, we don't actually have to go back to appendix B and look at those because they give us the summary statistics. So the important bits here are 106. So maybe I'll just start jotting some of these things down. Sample size is 106. The sample mean uh, is 98.2. And the sample standard deviation is 0 0.62. Okay, 0 0.05 significance level. Uh, that's the normal significance level. Uh, test the claim that, and really here's your key phrase. Uh, test the claim that mean body temperature is equal to 98.6, which is what we've all been taught, uh, at least those of us that grew up with Fahrenheit. So the claim is that the mean is 98.6. And then it just says test the claim and is there evidence to conclude that that's wrong? Okay, so let's get our setup going. We have the hypothesis, one of them. Uh, we need the opposite hypothesis. Uh, if one is equal, then the other one has to be not equal to. So it's either equal to 98.6 or it is not equal to 98.6. Uh, the one that has the equal sign gets to be the null. So there's the null hypothesis. Here's the alternative hypothesis. Um, basic idea still. I uh, don't have to draw this picture, but I always like doing it anyway. Uh, we're going to give the null the benefit of the doubt and say, yeah, if it's 98.6, then different samples should look like this. Our sample came out 98.2. And the question is, is 98.2 kind of here or is, is 98.2 more over here? Uh, which would be good evidence that 98.6 is wrong, whereas this would not be good evidence. Okay, uh, so we'll figure that out using the p-value. So this is time to grab technology. Um, get stat disk and go under analysis and hypothesis testing and uh, means, mean, one sample. And in case you don't remember, our alternative hypothesis is that the population mean is not equal to the claim. So population mean not equal to the claim. Uh, that's the one that we want. Significance level is 5%. That's correct. Uh, the claim was 98.6. Population standard deviation is not known. Sample size was, what, 106? Yep. 106. Sample mean was 98.2. And the sample standard deviation, I think, was 0 0.62, if I remember right. Let's verify that. Uh, yeah, 0 0.62. Okay, uh, so we are ready to hit evaluate and see what our p-value is. All right, p-value is zero. And it's not truly zero, by the way. There, there's probably some tiny little bit over here, but at least two, one, two, three, four, five decimal places uh, is definitely zero. And that's good enough for us to make our decision, right? So. Uh, we will say the p 
value. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, that means this 98.6 is actually way off the edge of the curve, probably even further off than what I've drawn. Um, so that definitely says, doesn't seem like the null's right. Doesn't seem like this whole curve that I drew is right. So we are going to reject the null here and say it seems like 98.6 is wrong, but let's make that statement a little more formal. So there is evidence to reject the, and I'm basically going to say reject the null, but don't use the word null, right? So say what the null actually means. Uh, so there's evidence to reject that the mean body temperature is not a, not 90.6. Okay, so or to reject the claim that mean or average body temperature is 98.6. Um, so again, we're just basically saying reject the null. So there's evidence to reject the claim that people's average body temperature is 98.6. Uh, we don't know what it is, we haven't proved necessarily that's 98.2, that's just how our sample came out, but it does seem like 98.6 is wrong according to this data. And it's actually in the medical world, this is happening right now, is like they're trying to say, hey, people's body temperatures seem to be a little bit lower than maybe they were in the past, and maybe 98.6 isn't really the right number anymore. Okay, uh, so that was number 14. Uh, let's take a look at one more. Uh, this is number 20. And the reason I wanted to do this one is just it has data instead of statistics, uh, but we can handle that process. So listed below are some ages of race car drivers from USA Today. Okay, 0.05 significance level, which is the normal significance level. Test the claim that the mean age of all race car drivers is greater than 30. Okay, so this time I'm gonna start with the claim. The claim is that the mean is greater uh, than 30. Opposite claim, of course, would be less than or equal to 30. Uh, the one where I said the or equal to, that's the null, right? So there's the null. There's the alternative. And we're basically ready to get a p-value. Uh, we need to go to stat disk and this time we'll select the uh, you know the data option and type these numbers in. Okay so let's get stat disk and rather than use summary statistics I'll click use data. Uh, it pulls up the data editor and you would type the numbers in right here. Uh, it just so happens I've already typed them in to save us a little bit of time. Uh, so put the data num data points in, starting with 32 and 32 and 33, right? 32, 32, 33. So type all those in, uh, and also set up the test. So this time the alternative was that the population mean. Here's the alternative: the mean is greater than the claim, greater than. 30. So population mean is greater than the claim. Um, if these are hard for you to pick out, uh, it should the actual symbol should always be pointing the same direction that you wrote down on your paper, right? So notice the symbol is a greater than. It's an actual like point to the right and open mouth to the left. Uh, same as the symbol that you have here with your alternative claim written down. Uh, anyway, uh, significance level was 0.05, right? Yep, 0.05 significance level. Uh, the claimed mean was 30. And the column containing the sample data is column one. And evaluate this. And the bit that we need is down here. 
Uh, particularly, we need a p-value of 0 0.0453. Um, and here's the question, is that an unusual sample? And keep in mind our definition for unusual is right here anything less than 5%. Uh, this is not much less than 5%, but it is. And that's our dividing line, right? That's our, that's our decision rule. So it is less than 5%. It's an unusual sample. So sample is unusual, uh, which means we will reject the null. And we need to finish off by writing a sentence that says, hey, what does it mean to reject the null? What does that say about race car drivers? Uh, so we're rejecting the null, which means we're going with the alternative. Um, and it, you kind of, again, you could structure your sentence to say either one of those things. You could sort of say, I reject that the average age of race car drivers is less than or equal to 30 which seems kind of like a double negative. So maybe I'll just say there's evidence or the evidence suggests that the average is greater than 30. So evidence suggests that the average age of race car drivers is greater than 30. Um, I know that some of you are going to, on the next test, you are going to want to leave out that part right there. And you're going to write me a sentence that says, you know, the evidence suggests that the average is greater than 30. And I, on your test, will write down average of what? Minus two. <laughs> uh, so you'll miss a couple points uh, if you don't tell me what average we're talking about. Um, the back of the book usually includes this information. Every once in a while, they leave this out. But uh, I think it's really important for your sentence to be a standalone sentence that person doesn't need to have read the problem, person doesn't need to have taken statistics. Uh, they can just read that sentence and know something about the world. Right? So make sure you include that on your homework too. All right, I think you're ready. Tackle the 8-4 homework.